Hello guys, Damodoc82 here. And um, before we get started on this tutorial, I uh, wanted to give you guys a reason why we're going to be doing a tutorial on building biplanes. And that is, um, I'm going to announce in this video that I'm going to be having a biplane tournament. Uh, it's going to be called King of the Skies. And uh, yeah, basically we're just going to have like a bunch of uh, old school uh, biplanes uh, dogfight. That's the idea anyway. So I thought uh, it might be important for some of you who may want to participate in this uh, to learn how to make a biplane. And that's going to be the purpose of this video here. So we're going to try to build this to where it's going to probably uh, be mostly geared towards being a fighter plane and not necessarily something for attacking ground targets. I might try to do uh, some missiles on it, uh, more, well not necessarily missiles, more like just uh, unguided thumperhead rockets. Just in case uh, some of you guys might want to try that in your entries, if you do choose to participate. Anyway, let's go ahead and put down our first uh, block here. Now, to build these, um, anything but lead or heavy armor might be okay. I, I wouldn't want to try rubber, it'd probably be a little bit too flimsy. But uh, about everything else here you could probably use that would probably be able to fly. Um, there's going to be like about a 30k cap on how much these things can cost, so you could probably do a bit better than wood, honestly. So if you want to try something like metal or lightweight alloy, those are options. Anyway, uh, this is going to be using a fuel engine for propulsion. But for right now, I kind of just want to build a fuselage here so we could put an engine in it. I think I want to use two meter beams for this so we can try to reduce some of the drag. Uh, I'm thinking these are probably going to be having a maximum speed cap of about, oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. 80 meters a second is what I am picturing for this. Um, you don't really have to necessarily do it the way that I am doing right now. This is uh, just to um, make a kind of a tidy look in front for the aircraft. All right, so now we kind of got a front for this thing going. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a deadly blade for the front for propulsion. I don't expect these to be driven solely by deadly blades, by the way. Uh, it, you can have some um, how, how should I word this? If you want to use jet thrusters in this, uh, you can. I would just highly recommend trying to hide them in the fuselage somehow. Or the Actually, there's a few ways that you can hide them in the wings, too, but we'll, we'll get to those later. And since these are probably going to be taking the most damage for the front, I think I'm going to armor up that middle a little bit more. Anyways, let's um, see if we can figure out what kind of engine configuration that we want for this thing. Now we might come back and do something with this dead blade later on, but right now we're not going to worry about it. So. Uh, usually about mm, roughly 2k power seems to be uh, about as much as you would need for one of these. Oops, did not mean to do that, or that. I'm just trying to think of a way to put this together. Placing the engines in these can be a little bit on the tricky side. I'm just trying to get an idea how I'd like to do it. Uh, this configuration probably work pretty well here. So I think I want to do something like this. And just for grins, we're going to Okay, that's 
That's actually got lots of power, that's awesome. Uh, so we can probably remove those. And that guy there. And we're going to be placing a few radiators in here. I think that'll probably be pretty good. Okay, so we're probably going to need to vent these engines a bit. you do not have to use the same materials as I am using in this. You can use whatever the hell you feel like. I just wouldn't recommend heavy armor because that's going to be banned, and the lead will probably make this thing way too heavy. Alright. So, we got our engine installed. So I want to put in a place to mount some autocannons. Also with these planes, um, they do have some pitching issues, so installing you know, some uh, of these uh, jet thrusters would probably be a very good idea, try to help control that a bit. And I think we're going to put just a little bit of fuel in there like so. Mm. Yeah, we'll go with the 3 meter beam there. And hmm. actually, let's pull those beams out there. And we're going to have to pull those radiators, I'm afraid. Okay, and this is uh, going to be a way to fit some. Uh, of the gases from the engine. These not connected? Okay. We'll just do it like that. That way it'll at least get some cooling. And up here we're going to go and grab us a couple of local weapons controllers. We're gonna do the all-in-ones just to try to save us some volume. And I always like to do a couple of um, like the 60 mil auto cannons here up front just because it makes it look nice. So let's go into sub-objects, we'll grab a 2 axis turret, and let's go into, oh, that's the wrong one, so all weapons. Uh, by the way, this turret, I'm, I'm sorry, this um, tournament is going to be using uh, vanilla weapons, so yeah, don't worry about uh, any of the more simple weapons mod for this. Uh, what else? We need a second to access turret here. And we're going to grab another 60mm autocannon. We'll put it over that. Alright, I'm, I'm playing it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're going to put the pilot seat in right here. You don't necessarily have to have this. Just something I like to do. Something like that. And up here, I'm just going to put just a little bit of glass for a windshield for the pilot. Look at something... A lot of times with these with the uh, glass pieces, I'll like add a very very light blue to them just so they uh, are a bit more visible but still transparent. And yeah, we're looking good so far. And right about here, I think will be a very good spot to start on the wings. 
I forgot to change the color back to default. Not bad. Or you can paint these however the hell you want. So, the wings can be a pretty good place to mount sensors for your detection system. Uh, this is something that I have done with a lot of my uh, biplanes is I'll put a glass pane there in the front, the uh, one meter wedge, and then I'll go under decorations and we'll grab a couple of these metal portholes. And we're going to need a wireless receiver. And over here I'm gonna put in a laser rangefinder. Connection rules can be so weird sometimes. All right, now we will put some blocks in here. I just kind of want to put some uh, piping here. Yeah, I'll do it that way. And I think I'll have this come up just slightly, like so. There we go. I want to make sure that these actually not be clear of anything that's behind them. I raise them up just a little bit because sometimes uh, they'll be in line with the tail of the plane and it's just, it's going to mess up things. So, what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to cover these up a little bit. So we're going to grab some of these cliques. And we're probably going to use the uh, exact same technique when we go to arm the plane with some uh, APS. There, that's looking pretty good. So we're probably going to want a all-in-one weapon controller for this. And that'll be where we start putting in our APS. Now you won't have to do it exactly like this, this is just the way I like to do it. But uh, this is just to give you some ideas of how you can mount it in the wings. We want to make sure that accuracy is up pretty good. I think we'll just go with like a um, 20 millimeter on this and two barrels. And we're just going to copy all the settings and put them on this dude. There we go. Now, I don't expect very big shells to be coming out of this. I, again, if you can make them fit, you, you can most likely go bigger. Um, I'm going to add some belt fed loaders. Usually three is a pretty good amount of them. And for the barrels, I think I want to do something like this. Just to help reduce the recoil. And what do we want to do next? And this could actually be done like that, make use of that gap in there. Alright, let's get our autoloaders. Our, I'm sorry, the clips for our autoloaders in. input feeders. Usually with a setup like this you can get about 500 RPM. Pretty good. Yeah, it's already starting to look like a biplane. Okay, let's add a little bit more to the fuselage here. I think bringing it back like maybe another four meters would probably be okay, and then we could start narrowing it down like so.
Actually, that seems to be a little long, don't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll try two meters then. And then start to try to taper it back some. Oh, that's the wrong size. There we go. Let's go ahead and install that while we're thinking about it. Turn that off. And we're more than likely going to need some other things back here. Let's see, I like to have at least one wireless snooper when I do these. Just in case uh, the other sensors get shot out. Feels like a pretty good thing to have. And that seems like it's just enough there. All right. And the huge uh, jet thrusters, well, they usually do pretty good for this kind of thing. Uh, I should note, though, while I'm putting this in, that um, custom jet engines are not going to be permitted in this. So, just adds up on that. You know, I was trying to think of how I want to do the rear of the plane now. So I think something like that might work. I usually find that these parts right here, they do pretty good for the tail. Or the tails on these. Do we have fuel tanks installed in this? It looks like we could use some about here. If you're wanting to add just a little bit of speed to these, putting some jet thrusters about here usually is a pretty good option. I could show you how to hide them here in a little bit. It'd be like you never know that they were there. some turning thrusters for this guy. I think that'll do just fine there. 
and we're going to need some pitching thrusters. That's why I put the uh, that guy like I did right there. The wedges are going to be your friend for making these because they'll help reduce a lot of drag. And no one likes to be a drag. And do that. And now we can put another pitching thruster up here. You see, I hide it right about there. If you guys have, are familiar with my work, you've probably seen me do this several times this way. So it's probably not going to be too new for a whole lot of people. Um, something I want to do here though is I'm going to take some control surfaces, like so. Let's just give it a little bit more turning force is generally the only reason why I'm doing it like that. So usually these, these parts like right here can be a very good place to put your APS shell customizer. So that's what we're going to do in here. I think I could probably cut that back just a little bit. And I don't think I want to do like that many parts for it. Yeah, I think that'll work just fine. Alright, so in here... We got our shell ready to go. Um, I think we're just going to go with something really simple here. Armor piercing head. Yeah, I think I'm going to switch this guy to a visible tracer. It doesn't really matter what color the tracer, it just when you're shooting guns that fire very, very rapidly, tracers are usually a pretty good idea. Pretty solid choice. Alright, we still need a place for our ammunition. But we'll worry about that here in a little bit. I got a few ideas of what I'd like to do with that. And I think I want to go ahead and try to put on the upper wings. I think that'll do. Yeah, that looks good. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how to set up missiles for this. Like I said, you don't necessarily need them, and you'd probably be better off using APS for this. So let's go ahead and grab our missiles. And usually small missiles do very, very well with this kind of setup. Uh, that should probably do. And... going to need some connectors, like so, and we're going to need the gantries, more gantries, and we can pull these out right here. side on this, like so. So trying to figure out how I want to connect these upper wings up to the body of the plane. I think we're going to go with something like this, and like this. Or do we want to raise those wings up just a little bit more? I'm 
wanted to bring them up just a little bit more. Yeah, let's do that. We'll just prefab this and move it up one. And there we go. You know, we can just reactivate the connection checks. Put the connection thing back on, and we are golden. I'm just trying to think of how I can make this look good. Something like that. And then up here we could do one of these, I think. Now, there will be some engineering issues from having them up there like that. Um, I can't do that. Well, we can come back and fix that with the decoration. That is not a big deal at all. Anyway, I think I'm going to move that back just a little bit more. My two meter block work. Yeah, we'll come back to it. I'll think on it some more. So up here, uh, let's go ahead and put in our rolling thrusters. And we'll put some additional thrusters there. So now I'm thinking there might be a few good places to store ammo. I think right about here might be a good one. Let's see how much ammo we're going to need to generate. Will this be enough? Not quite. Okay. I had a feeling. Will that be enough then? Getting warmer. Actually, I think we could probably get away with sticking some one by four ammo boxes up here. Like so. Because we're just going to end up covering up this crap you know, with uh, a plate panels anyway. So we got sensors, we've got our rockets. Actually, I'm debating of putting some additional sensors up there. That could potentially be a problem because of the amount of space that we have available for putting them in. But I have an idea. Now, you don't necessarily need this many, but I like redundancy. So I'm going to take advantage of it. And that should make a pretty decent mounting point for this sort of thing. 
Uh, did I turn you? Yeah, you're facing the right direction, good. So we have a little bit of room here. Can we just connect it like this? Nope. I thought it'd be worth a look, because that would save a lot of uh, headaches at some point. Okay. Here. Now we have all the detection in place. We have some ammo. Do we have enough for it? Yep. That is the exact amount that we need. We're going to need a little bit more storage, so I'm going to put some crates here. Um, I believe in the rules, as I have them written about right now, is that there's going to be like a budget of about 10,000 materials. that you guys will have to play with for these. So now we need Actually, I think I want to put a single repair bot in here. Because that will be allowed. We'll just slap that little guy in right over here. Since these planes are going to be charging headlong into each other, I don't see this area, the uh, aircraft, getting blown to pieces very often. So that's one of the reasons why I'm storing things in this area. So let's go back into resources. Uh, I'm going to put some more material storage in here. That's a bit much in it. Uh, that's probably close enough for our purposes. But I prefer, yeah. So that's good now. Now there are some issues that could potentially uh, arise from having uh, the setup like this. What I did here with the, uh, the exhaust pipes. Which would be that if these pipes get shut off, then the engines won't be able to vent real well because they'll just be blown against these oblique panels. They need to have a clear line of sight to wherever they're vented to. But that's mostly just for aesthetic. I mean, you don't have to do it this way. That's just something that I like to do. So now, I think we're ready to put in an AI. So. One that works very, very good for these is to go with, I think we will do this one here. And that all looks pretty good. So let's go maneuver. We're going to add a maneuver. Airplane 2.0 will be just fine for this. Uh, we can have a little bit of banking for turns. Usually 45 degrees is pretty good for that. And under behaviors, let's see here. Let's look at this attack run. We want to have it attack relative to its target, so that way it will dive on top of it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and enable the PIDs. That one looks good. Go there. Okay. So let's let it go. Oh, I fudged. Definitely fudged. Yeah, I forgot about that bit. Okay, we're going to have to find a different place to store that. That's fine. 
I should have thought a little bit more about that. I think I had these set incorrectly here. Yeah, these need to be roller. Now, you can use the wing parts instead for this. I just prefer thr the uh, thrusters because they're more durable. That's completely up to you. Now, one of the reasons why it's going into space right now is because I think it's just these are not set correctly. So we're going to turn off the movement for a moment and let it come back down to Earth for a little while. Uh, so we're definitely going to need more ammo for this now because it can't store it up in the wings like I was hoping. We'll just lock her in place for the moment. Uh, yeah, I think I can do it that way. It looks like it may need some more fuel as well. So let's take one of these out and we're going to put in a fuel tank, I think. And we'll just turn its AI back on. Yeah, it's a little funny, isn't it? Make sure that these are all set correctly. Those are definitely pitchers. Are you set up for pitcher or roller? You're set up for... Yeah, you need to be set for roll. You're set for roll, and you're set for roll. You're set for roll, you're set for roll. You're set for roll, and you still need to be set for roll. Okay, awesome. So this is a problem that a lot of people have when building airplanes, is that they want to fly into space. That's fine, we can work around it. Uh, we're going to give this a little bit of motor drive. And I believe one of the reasons why this is wanting to fly in the space is because we have all this drag on top coming from the upper wings. And I think I want to reduce the amount of power that these use. And... Spread to there as well. We might want to put an addition. No, that's... Yeah, that's going to be clear of it. Okay, good. I want to make sure that these uh, jet thrusters, that they have clearance in whatever direction that they're going to be working in. It needs to pitch down just a little bit more to fight the drag from uh, the wing here on top. So let's go ahead and start this back up. Yeah, that seems to be working much better. Why are you firing? They're roller presets. There we go. And a lot of these, you can reduce the power to them. A little what I'm trying to do here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn your AI back off just so you can come back down. These turning thrusters don't need to be so powerful.
It's probably a good altitude to turn the AI back on it. Yeah, we're definitely going to need those thrusters at full power. If we want to maintain the correct altitude. That's fine. I think we got the engine power to spare. Yeah, she's coming back down. That's also something a lot of people struggle with, is just trying to make them fly at the altitude that you want them. Okay, so... I'm gonna make sure that this stays at a specific altitude. I think I want to go for 200 meters here and here. And we probably don't need this to go any higher than probably 400 meters. Probably be fine. It's looking good. Alright, so are the cannons, are they loading? Okay, let's go ahead and get those loading. Still got a little bit of engine power to spare, that's good. All have the correct settings. I think that's looking good. All right, so I want to put in some kind of brace here for the left and right, just to make the wings a little bit more sturdy. What? Got the doing go okay, can cost. Thought I would have a quick look at that. Okay. So we're gonna do that down there and up here. And I think I want to go with this. And this. That. That's just another video of uh, finishing up here. All right. So now we're gonna do some mimic work to try to hide this a, some of this a bit. So, well, not necessarily mimics, but decorations. Anyway, uh, let's uh, hide these missiles here a little bit better. I'm gonna want. Edge, one meter, and let's have that go forward about a meter, and we're going to roll it 90 degrees, that's the wrong direction, is that roll 90 degrees, there we go, uh, left and right, let's adjust that to about there, and left, or I'm sorry, this would be up and down scaling I believe, yeah. And we can just apply that to the other side since we got our mirror line up. Uh, and here we're probably going to have to change these over to a different type of missile because it's just not going to be viable for the tournament. So we're going to go with short range thruster. And instead of an active radar seeker, we're going to go with a thumper head. And we don't need APN. And since these are unguided, we don't worry about signal processors or any crap like that. Just to, uh, let's just go with uh, frag explosive. Pretty simple. Yeah, let's see here. Let's save that to there. I don't even know why I have that name cracker, but I've just been using it as a general temporary. 
Uh, let's load this guy, and we'll copy all. There, now all those should be the correct setting. Um, by the way, if you guys want to do triplanes, those are going to be welcome in this tournament as well. So, if you want to try doing that, go for it. Uh, so let's try to get rid of these particle effects. There, that looks much better. And let's try to hide this front, front thruster here. So we're going to go with the metal lock. And we want it to up and down scaling, like 0 0.001. Trick little card, show me. And there we go. Now you would have probably never known that there was a thruster in there. I'm uh, probably going to do the same thing down here on the bottom. So we're going to go in here, we're going to grab a metal beam. Uh, we're going to yacht around, up and down scaling, and bam! We never know they were there. Let's add another one over here, the metal wedge. Uh, yacht around, we're going to roll it 90 degrees. I'm going to move this back a wee bit. And we're going to do the up and down scaling, go to 4 with that, left and right positioning, 0.5. And we can just apply it like that. There. It's looking more and more like a biplane, ain't it, folks? Let's see. I don't think we set up the these two access turrets here. Uh, usually, when I make these, I set a firing cone of about 20 degrees in all these little categories here. It does very, very well. And we can copy that to our clipboard and use it for the other one. And I think I want the APS to do the same here. Uh, yeah, we want to do this. And we're going to copy that to the clipboard. All right, we're all good there. And we should probably copy those settings to the missile launchers up here. So let's go ahead and do that. No, I guess I won't let me do that because it's a different weapon type. That's okay. I just set all these dudes to 20. We'll copy that. And come over here and paste those settings in here. It's looking good. And probably need to set the ranges on these. Usually a range of about 700 meters works pretty good for a lot of the weapons that we'll be using here. Um, I wouldn't bother with balloons if you're wanting to build a plane for this. Uh, reason being is I'll probably be doing the uh oh I forgot one. I'll be doing the competition in the Ashes of the Empire map. There we go. We'll just warp above it. Or into it, I'm sorry. Alright, so we need to do a few more things before I consider this good. Right now, uh, I think she's ready to go. We'll test it here in a little bit. I just want to finish doing some decorations on it.
Alright, and we can put that rid of it. So, I'm not going to bother painting it. Um, I mean, you guys can paint yours however you want. Uh, this is mostly going to be just for, to de de uh, sorry, demonstrate to you guys how to do these. And we're going to copy these settings. And we're going to put them up here. And we'll apply the mirror with that as well. And we can do the same thing here. So we all need to roll it up into the correct position and apply the mirror. Looking good. And I think. Yeah, we still need some more. Not a mistake. Okay. Uh, we're going to copy all, and up here we're going to paste all, apply the mirror. I think I'm going to just tear that out, and then we'll just put some decorations in there instead. That'll just help reduce the drag a little bit. Position. You go there. Uh, copy all. Paste all. I'm gonna yaw you back around the other way, like that. And we'll set this right there. And now it's like it never happened. Okay, so let's go ahead and. Add some more decorations here. We're going to go with the three meter applique. Just yaw that guy around and apply it with mirror. Copy all. Paste all. We'll just put that. There. We'll apply with mirror. Okay. I have to delete all. And we're going to do paste all. That needs to roll. And move back the other way about a meter. There we go. Ah. All right, now we just got to do up the tail here. Actually, let's get rid of this real quick. Just yaw it around like so. Uh, left and right scaling, let's go like that. I think I went the wrong direction with that. Left and right scaling is what I wanted. There we go. I had the wrong thing selected. That happens. Okay. Now you would never know that there are thrusters there. Uh, let's go ahead and do these up. Go with the old metal wedge once again. And negative 90. Forward, backward, position that guy into its spot. Apply with mirror. And let's hide this here. The metal slope. That's not what I wanted. There we go. 
you know, you would have never known that there was a jet thruster in there. And we're gonna hide this guy here too. Alright, let's hide this guy too. The wedge. And we'll pitch that guy into place. Move it into position. That's all done. Alright. We just got a little bit of tail work. Let's go ahead and do that. I think I want three meter metal beam. Because we can just do this. And the left and right scaling. Like so. And we'll do the same here. Except we'll do it with a two meter. back into position here. Left and right scaling. Copy all. Paste. And we can change that back to one and we want the up and down instead on this guy. Uh, copy all. Play with mirror. I could have probably just used the same one and stretched it out, but that's fine. This video is kind of getting long anyway. Alright, so now the only thing it's missing is landing gear. The uh, way I like to do landing gear is usually with decorations. Reason being is that you can put them anywhere and they won't cause any drag whatsoever. Uh, the way I like to do those is I'll go in here, I'll go add new decoration. Um, we're going to go. I think I want a metal wedge front two meter. And we'll pitch it straight down like that. Uh, I think I want the yaw to the outside. Like so. And we'll apply that. Okay, so now we need to get some wheels on here. That's easy to do. We'll go to add new decoration. And the one I like to use for this is a uh, glass pole. You'll see why here in a sec. And we're going to yaw that guy around. It doesn't matter, it just needs to be 90 degrees. I thought I put 90. Oops, not 9,000. It's over 9,000! Oh, anyway, um, up and down position. Put you about there. Up and down scale. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, we need the forward backward scaling. I'll get to like a little disc like that. And maybe do this. Yeah, that looks good. Left right positioning. We will do about. Uh, it needs to come over a little bit more, I think. Yeah, that looks, that looks doable. Um. I want it to come down just a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and apply that guy. So, glass is very, very good to use for this type of decoration. Because it works very, very well with the color black. I'll show you what I mean here in a moment. If you're wanting just a nice flat black, then the poles are a very good way to go, especially if you're going to use glass. Uh, I think I wanted this in the regular color. Yeah, like so. And now we just need a rear landing gear. So we'll add a new decoration. Uh, the metal wedges work pretty good for this too, honestly. That'll work. 
Yes, yeah, so that'll do just nicely. Um, I think I want the wheels over here just a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and change that. But uh, first, I want to copy that. Well, no, we won't copy that. Uh, let's make the wheels on this a little bit bigger. And we'll apply with mirror. That looks good. Okay. And let's see here. Add a new decoration. We're going to go with the glass pole again. Going to yacht 90 degrees. Forward, backward. Up and down. We're going to make it black. Just solid black. And we can probably make it a little bit smaller. And we definitely want it to be thinner. I think that'll work. There we go. We have a biplane. So I think I might do a yeah. Let's do like a few more decorations and we'll color good. We'll do some combat testing. See how that looks. That'll do. And I think up here, since we're not going to have to worry about too much getting in the way up there, we're going to put some oblique corners up there, I think. Drop our mirror line back down. That's just pretty it up a little bit. There we go. Now the APS it might need some recoil absorption. Actually, it looks like it needs to be. Yeah, it needs a bit more cooling. You can fix that. Might have to retetris a few bits down here. I think though, it's not a big deal. Uh, we can move these back. You can just hold your horses right there, mister. And I want the camera there instead. Actually, yeah, I can do that. Too bad, I think I can move with that. Okay. So let's do a yield marauder test. Get a few of them out there. Usually when I do these initial tests, I put the uh, whatever I'm building on god mode. There she goes. And start diving on her target. For some reason, didn't fire though. Okay. Do I have the weapon selected? No. Okay. So it gives here. Looks like we're running out of materials though. Let's add some real quick. if I screwed up something in the local weapon controllers. Ah, that's what I did wrong. I accidentally clicked that. Okay. Okay, so I fudged something with these rockets. 
I forgot to put some fuel. And they're gonna need a one turn. That's an easy enough fix. There we go. As you can see, those rockets can be pretty accurate when you put the one turn in them. And for this competition, I wouldn't worry about there being a um, target prioritization card because you're just going to be fighting against other planes. And that's pretty much it. Um, but you could probably go and extend the fuselage back, like maybe another meter or so to try to fit more things in. But this is mostly just to demonstrate to you guys how to build something like this. Those dumbfire rockets make these things very, very dangerous. One of the reasons why it's flying so high right now is because uh, I have the I have it set to make attack runs with the altitude relative to the target. Uh, let just for fun before we end the video here, I'm going to go in here and we're going to spawn in a few dusters just to see how well this thing does at shooting with them. Don't expect the rockets to do very well against other aircraft. Uh, they'll be mostly more suitable for firing at ground and slow targets. But if you want to include them, go for it. I just don't expect them to hit anything. Yeah, that came pretty close. I probably should have gotten rid of the Marauder first. Let's, let's destroy the, the Marauders and we'll sp respawn the Dusters back in. Yeah. Did a little damage. Again, you don't have to do the shells the exact same way I did. Um, something else that should be taken into consideration with the APS. Um, the If you don't have any recoil like I didn't put in here, you might have some accuracy issues, so that's something to be aware of. It looks like we are needing a little bit more fuel. I think I had to rip a few things out just a moment ago for that reason. Or, well, for the uh, APS. I think we might have some space up here somewhere. Mm, nah. Let's just slap a fuel tank in back here. So we still have a little bit of room. Seems like it might still be struggling with fuel for a little bit, but I think you guys get the gist. There are also a few things that you can do, um, I'm just going to go over this real quickly, is you can put in a, like a pair of ACBs, actually I think it needs about three or four ACBs for this to work. You need an ACB to slow the plane down when there is a target, or when the target is in the bearing of like a 20 degrees to 20 yeah, degrees in front of the plane, and when you're within about 500 meters, you have those uh, both uh, going off at the same time, have it to 
reduce the speed of the plane by like 50% so that, that way it can spend more time with its machine guns on the target. And of course you need another set of ACBs to uh, reset the plane back to full speed afterwards. Yeah, this thing is going to struggle using those missiles against the um, aircraft. And guided weapons are not allowed in this tournament. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but if I haven't, I'm just going to say it again. Alright, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys got something out of this that you can use for other things or, and, or the tournament. So uh, y'all have yourselves a hell of a day, and keep your hammer high. Later.